prosperous. Hallelujah. It is my pleasure and my honor now to welcome a man of God that I admire so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, help me welcome Pastor Ken. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm Pastor Ken. I, uh, I am here on Sunday morning, and uh, our church is here then, and, and uh, you probably see me in the uh, afternoon when you're coming in, and we're just leaving. And we are Grace Bible Church. And we praise God that we share our building with you. And I praise God for you. <laughs> what is your name? Uh, Moshe Ami. Moshe Ami. Uh, <laughs> my dear friends, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. I would like to speak to you today about taking journeys. Going on a long, long trip. Now I suspect as I look around that many of you have gone on long, long journeys. You have come from far, far away. I want to speak to you of a man who lived 4,000 years ago. And he went on a tremendous journey. It was not as far as the journeys that you have been on that have brought you all the way here. But it was the greatest journey that a human being can take. This was the journey that he took to get him to God. This is the journey where he stepped out the front door of his life. And by faith he took one step. And he believed that he would step and end on solid ground. This is what faith is. It is stepping out on the journey. Maybe in the dark. Maybe in the storm. And not seeing the ground in front of your feet. But trusting God when you walk. When you walk with Him. Your foot. Your foot. Will land. On solid ground. This man's name is Abraham. Ibrahim. Let me read you the story. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 12. And I will start in a little bit ahead in chapter 11. And we will move through it slow so we can tell the whole story. Now, this far in the Bible, we have seen in the very beginning, Genesis 1 and 2, the creation. 
a loving, creative God spoke into existence everything that there is. And as the chief crown of all his creation, he made a man. And he made a woman. And they lived in paradise with God. And it was very good. But then comes along what? Comes along to us chapter 3. The fall. From everything being so good in one and two. In chapter 3 comes the greatest disaster that, that ever occurred in the history of man. For this was the first recorded time where people said no to God. No to God. This is called the great fall. As Eve was tempted in the garden, she chose to disobey God. And the rest of chapter 3 Chapter 4, Nine, 5, ten, 6, sita, worse, worse, tragedy, tragedy. God destroys the earth with a flood. <laughs> Lots of water. <laughs> he saves one man and his family. Now what's that man's name? I think he played the drums too. <laughs> his name was Noah. After the flood and the judgment, Noah's three sons started it all over again. His son named Shem went on to be the father of a man named Terah. Now, from looking at the entire world of all people, and from looking in chapter 10 at the world of the nations, now we are coming down to one family with a father named Terah and he had three boys. Listen to the story. Terah lived 70 years and became the father of Abraham, Abraham. Nahor, Nahor and Haran. Now, these are the records of the generation of Terah. Terah became the father of Abraham, Nahor, Nahor and Haran. Haran became the father of Lot. Haran died in the presence of his father Terah in the land of his birth in the land where he was born Ur of the Chaldeans this is modern day Iraq okay Abraham and Nahor took wives just in anything okay Oh, okay, okay. Abraham and Nahor took wives for themselves. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai. 
the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran. You want to tell the whole yes, story? Oh, you've got a good memory here. Okay. <laughs> Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans in order to enter the land of Canaan. And they went as far as Haran and settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Amen. Okay. This, all right. This gives me a little bit of background of the life of this man, Abraham. The archaeologists tell us that Ur, the city of Abraham, was a wonderful ancient city. It was huge. It had a lot of water from the Euphrates River. It had many temples. Universities. Businesses. Restaurants. Homes. Palaces. The people were very, very wealthy. The text also tells us that Abraham himself was married to a woman named Sarah. And it is almost hidden in the text. It's a secret in the text. To see the great trouble and pain that this marriage lived under. They lived in a wonderful city. They had money. They had a large family. They had many, many successes. And they had each other. But Sarai was barren. She could have no children. Now, in this story, in this time in history, if a woman could not have children, it was always her fault. It was never considered the husband's fault. Do you women like that? <laughs> they, they never considered that it could be the husband's fault to not have children. Children were the wealth of a family. It was in having children that you could have more animals, more livestock, more business, more money, more success. And as you grew older and older, guess who would take care of you? Your children would take care of you. In this time, to be married and not have children, you were a failure. The first thing that I see in this story about God calling a person is that God comes to us and God meets us where we're at. God comes to us in our pain. God comes to us in our brokenness. God does not wait for us to be good. To do better. To make more. To finally be good enough. So that God will notice me. No. 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 God goes on the journey to come to me to find me where I'm at. And if I am in pain, and if I am hurting, and if my family is poor, and if my marriage is stressed and troubled, 
That is where God meets me. That's why Paul wrote in the book of Romans, God demonstrates his love for us with this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God does not wait for me to be better to come to me. So listen to what God said to Abraham. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. So you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. I see when I follow God that he meets me where I'm at. And I see when I follow God he gives me instructions to follow today along with promises to believe in for the future. Today God says leave that and go to that. Abraham was called to leave his home to leave his family and his father to leave his city to leave his wealth to leave the culture of his people it was, it was the kind of food he ate it was the kind of money he had it was the kind of clothing he wore it was the friends that he grew up with it was everything that was normal and natural in life for him and God said leave God still says that today and there is no journey that God calls you on today that is the longer than the journey that God goes on to find you wherever you're at and when he finds you he has something to say to you and what he is saying to you is that there are some things to leave behind because there are other things that I have promised to you God has promised to you I will bless you
to say yes to other things. So Abraham went forth. As God had spoken to him. Abram was 75 years old when he went. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions, and the persons which they had acquired, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and then they came, and then they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through this land as far as the city of Shechem to an oak of Moreh. Now, the Canaanites were in the land. Abram passed through this land and the Lord appeared to him and said to your descendants I will give this land. So Abraham Ibrahim. built an altar to the Lord right because the Lord had appeared to him. And then Abraham went on to the mountain on the east of Bethel and he pitched a tent. And in Bethel on the west side, and, and a city called Ai on the east side, there he built an altar to the Lord, and, and finally he called on the name of the Lord. And Abraham continued journeying into the south country. Now, the third thing that I see about God's call on my life from looking at this picture is that God calls me to three different things here. God calls me to be a witness to the world around me. Abraham came into the land of Canaan. He was rich. He had many livestock. He had servants. He had his wife. He had his nephew. He was from a better place. He was from a big city. And the Canaanites were in the land. And the Canaanites wondered, who is this guy? <laughs> this looks like a rich man <laughs> on a camping trip. <laughs> He's living in tents. <laughs> He didn't have to live in tents. Abraham could have lived in a city. He could have lived in a house. He didn't hide his faith away. But in front of the Canaanites around him, he walked as a man who worshipped God. And that, is the, and that is the second thing we must do if we're going to follow God out like this. We become worshippers of God. We're not closet worshippers. We are not secret Christians. We are not under a different name. Like Abraham in front of the Canaanites, we stand tall, we worship at our altar of God, and on our altar of God, the Son of God died for us. And before the culture around us, full of the love of God for them, we worship God in front of them. Yes, and let me say the final.
final thing that I see here. Abraham did not settle into a city. He did not settle down. Now, when you come to a new city, you look for a, you look for a place to stay. You don't live in a tent. You try to figure out where you're going to stay. Where there's room for you. And yet, Abraham, as we look at his life, kept moving in the land of Canaan. He did not leave behind a house. He did not leave behind a city. He did not leave behind a car. That's testing you there. Okay. <laughs> All Abraham left behind was altars. And the only piece of property that the man ever bought, the only thing he owned, was a grave to bury his wife in. The testimony that Abraham left to the Canaanites was a man who followed the call of God and left nothing behind but altars where he worshipped God. And in the Hebrew language, the name Bethel means house of God. And in this same language, the name Ai means a heap of ruins. The pile of stones of a ruined city. Abraham worshipped God in between the house of God and the, and the ruins of a city. We worship God today in the midst of a civilization falling apart without Jesus. On the one hand, facing the kingdom and the house of God. But on the other hand, worshiping in the midst of ruin. Why did Abram live this way? America is a place where you come to get more. You don't come to America to live like Abraham. You come to America to get a smartphone. You want a computer. You want a car. You want a credit card. And if you're really, really good, you're going to Disneyland. Abraham wanted the Lord. Abraham wanted the Lord.
against God. Abraham walked by one city after another built by people. Worshipped God in front of all the people around him and chose to walk through this promised land looking for the day ahead when he would receive all the blessing given to him by God. Listen, the God, the calling of God is the calling of your life to leave one thing, to walk with God to another thing before a watching world and a worshiper of God. And I want to tell you something. Distance that God has gone was the distance walked, was the distance traveled from the palace of the king of Jerusalem up a hill, up a hill outside of the city walls carrying a cross so that he would bear on his shoulders the sins of all the world my sin your sin that journey that he took was more than four or five blocks out the city up the hill it was a journey from heaven to the earth because when God calls a people to himself he goes to where they are at he finds them where they are at and he calls them to walk with him and along the way he makes them into worshippers makes them into people who witness for him And he gives them the power to say no to the things that would hinder them now. And to say yes to God. So the question that I leave you with today is one thing. When you wake up tomorrow morning, don't wake up and say, I wonder if God's calling me today. Don't wait for God to keep on knocking or to keep on calling. Don't hope that God will get tired of speaking to you. He will never stop calling you. He will never stop reaching out to you. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, don't ask yourself, is God calling me today? Ask yourself, how will I respond to the invitation of God Now, sometimes here, I don't know if this is everywhere in Africa, but here in America, sometimes we get an invitation and it says, it says, R.S. VP. It says, give me a call and let me know if you're going to be able to make it. Listen, when you wake up tomorrow morning, you tell God you're going to make it. Tell God you're going to make it. Tell him you heard it loud and clear. And tell him what the answer is yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Gracious King. Gracious King in heaven. We praise you. We follow you. Oh Lord, make our ears able to hear you. God, give us the courage and the strength to worship you. In the midst of a Canaanite world that does 
does not know you. God, give us the power to stand tall and say that we are following you. And as you promised to bless through Abraham's life, gracious king, gracious king, gracious king, bless, bless, save, save, amen.